This is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Monday, October 10th, 2016, New Zealand time. Um, and I'm pleased to have my very first live YouTube hangout. And we have as a guest, Multi Tom Tom. And I also have with me Sean Hufford, who is just helping me with the technical side of things, uh, as this is my first hangout. So welcome along, guys. Welcome, Multi Tom Tom. And thank you for joining, uh, joining us here. Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. So I'm in New Zealand. Um, now, if you don't want to say where you are, that's fine, but uh, maybe we can just sort of paint a bit of a picture if we can. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm in London. You're in London, okay. And Sean is in the US. Exactly where are you, Sean? I'm in northern Indiana. Right, okay. So um, we've got three people from all over the globe. <laughs> Um, and, of course, we've recently had the Equinox Challenge, uh, which was uh, sort of put together approximately six months ago after the previous uh, look at the Equinox back in March. And um, I'm going to just bring up uh, the video where this all sort of started. And uh, just bear with me. Um, as I say, this is my first Hangout, so I'm probably just going to take a little while to get used to the controls and so on. Um, yeah. The share screen tab is the second. There we go. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, so what we're looking at here is uh, one of my videos, which was about um, star rotation. I'll just um, highlight that so I can pick it up more easily. This is my video, Flat Earth Debunked Star Rotation, which I uploaded on March 24th, 2016. And uh, under this video, there was a lot of discussion as we scroll down and find that comment again. Here we go. Now, Multi Tom Tom, this was six months ago, as we can see here. And uh, you looked at the video and you said, there's nothing to refute because it's a load of bollocks. Equinox is just the time when we get near equal day and night, the time when the sun moves across the sky and reaches the equator. There's no evidence that the sun rises due east from anywhere on the earth because it's a fucking lie invented by your heroes, the fucking ball earth worshipping predecessors. They did that so that they could make the sun so big and make it 93 million miles away from the earth, making the assumption that the sunrise can be seen anywhere on earth. Fucking ludicrous, and all of you ball worshippers can keep worshipping your sun god. Okay, and then further down after I responded to you, you suggested here in this last paragraph, I suggest we set up an experiment where six ball earthers and six flat earthers do an experiment to check this at the next equinox. That is not difficult. If all 12 confirm that the sun rose due east, then I'll take the next flight out to New Zealand and hunt you down, and I will lick your boots and will become a ball earther for life. <laughs> right, so we set up the equinox challenge to the best of our ability. It was open to everyone. Um, unfortunately, there were no contributions by any flat earthers. Um, I recall that you also said that, that you would contribute to the Equinox Challenge with a video, and it's quite possible that maybe the weather didn't allow you. I'll let you explain your side of things there. Certainly, I couldn't contribute a video because we've had terrible weather for months. So here we are. We have did this, the Equinox Challenge. We had nine videos published in total. And all of the observations confirmed that the sun rose due east and set due west from any location on the date of the equinox. So now, Multi Tom, I'll hand over to you and I'd like to hear your response to your challenge and the results. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Daza. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm very disappointed that uh, you know no flat earthers came came forward with this experiment. Um, you know, I myself, I was, uh, I was in the process of doing it, but unfortunately, um, the the weather wasn't that good. Um, but uh, I saw the video that you were posting. You know, there was um, like five or six uh, of your friends who posted the video. So I thought, you know, that's more than enough. Plus, there was a there was twenty four hour hangout done by another group of a group of flat earthers, whom I don't agree with. You know, um, they promote the the AE Gleason's map, which I disagree with. I don't think that's a, that's a true representation of the, of the flat Earth, which I'll explain a bit later on, possibly. Um, so, yeah, 
now the, the, the results are in, um, I confirm that the sun indeed rises due east and sets due west on the uh, autumn and the spring equinox. However, you can't just automatically jump to the conclusion that the earth is a globe, you know. My model is a square flat earth. If you can imagine the, uh, the Mercator map, right, in a, in a flat sheet of paper, that's, <laughs> that's my model where the sun, you know, uh, enters, you can ask me more later if you want, but enters on the eastern portal, goes straight across the earth and exits at the western portal. And actually that explains the, uh, the sun's movement perfectly. Uh, as you know as well, we have these uh, lines called uh, the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. From where you know from which the the sun moves across throughout the year so the the sun going across the earth uh, it perfectly fits that model uh, maybe we can you know talk about that later okay multi tom tom now have you seen the video that was uh, uploaded in the last 24 hours by fly sparkane i've also uploaded it to my channel uh, showing the results of his analysis of the of, of the uh, video results, have you seen that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay, so you'll notice that he actually showed in his video the uh, different locations plotted on the various flat Earth maps and also the uh, Mercator map, uh, which you referred to. Um, but pointing out that for everyone to see a sun due east or due west from any location on that flat. Mercator map, you'd have to have multiple suns. But when we plot that on a sphere and project those lines out, uh, then it actually works perfectly on a sphere. Can you explain how you could be looking due east, due west on a flat map, but also be looking at, at one sun? Why are the angles not pointing uh, inwards um, to, to the sun? Can you explain that? Yeah, it's very simple. You know, you're we, uh, you know, we everybody, everybody on the earth, right? We we all see one sun. Where we are on the earth, you don't need uh, multiple suns. You know, when the sun rises and sets, we all wherever we are, wherever you are in the world, we see one sun. You know, I mean, you in uh, in New Zealand and me in London, we can look up, we see the same sun. There's no need for multiple suns. You know, the, uh, I think Sly was a bit uh, got carried carried away there and uh, doing all, all all sorts of fancy stuff. You know, but if you if you look at the the flat plane, right? If if you're standing on a flat plane and look up, you you just see one sun. You know, you don't need uh, you don't need any other explanation. You know, you see the sun going across east to west. You don't need uh, multiple sun, suns for that. You know, that's that's a that's, lot of uh, sorry. Yes, that's that's correct. That we see one sun, but the the point is is that. Uh, if you had multiple viewing locations and people plotted their viewing angle, then if there was one sun, then people would be looking in different directions at that sun. So if I was at the bottom of the, the, the flat Earth map, call it the Mercator map or whichever one you want to use, if I was looking at the, if I was positioned at the bottom of that map, looking at the sun due east, um, then I would be looking up uh, the map at an angle. Same for somebody who was at the top of the map looking down they would be looking downwards at an angle to that sun. They wouldn't be looking due east, due west. Now, I'll just um, share the, the uh, image in Slice by Kane's video where he looks at that. Hopefully, I'll pull up the right one here. Okay. So, are you seeing the map now? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So... He plotted the different locations on the Mercator map, and now we can use this graphic so I can explain it better with the visuals. So if there was one sun, let's say the sun was over here on the left-hand side, then this observer would be looking down here on an angle, and if there was someone down the bottom of Argentina looking at the sun, they would be looking up here at an angle. Um, they wouldn't all be looking due uh, east-west, across these lines, as we see with these pink lines here, they're all due east-west. So um, I am having trouble following your explanation 
um, given that all of the observations were due east-west and not at different angles pointing to one sun. Can you, can you explain that? Uh, well, if I had any skills at uh, graphics, I probably could produce graphics like Sly, but unfortunately, I don't. Um, I mean, like I said, the, the best explanation I can give you is, is, is right. Um, you know, this the, the position in, in London, for example, like, yeah. If you if you look uh, towards the equator, you know, uh, I can't really exp explain it properly. Um, Just a reminder, Tom. Tom, we're talking about sunrise and sunset, not about any other time of the day. Yeah, uh, can you uh, can you share my screen? I just want to quickly go over something. Okay. Um, sure. We can't share your screen. You have to do it yourself, and you move your mouse over the hangout window until you have a little bar on the left. There's the second yeah. one on the bottom, there's gonna be a little green arrow. Um, click on that, and then choose the screen you want to share. Right, so can you see this video? Yes, I can see it. Right, so I've uh, I'll put a link in, uh, in Sly's uh, video earlier on. Right, this uh, actually explains. If you could just give me a couple of minutes. Um, Sorry, that's the wrong one. Just give me one minute. Just while you're uh, finding that, um, of course, we do have another opportunity uh, every six months to repeat this exercise. Um, I welcome the involvement of flat Earth believers on this on this experiment on this exercise. Um, hopefully with the next Equinox uh, we could get more people on board to uh, repeat this experiment and um, see what, what they come up with. Right, uh, this video is, is by a YouTuber called Free Energy, yeah? Um, he's also a believer in the, the square flat earth and this explains how the sun works on the earth square flat earth. You could just watch it for a couple of minutes. Now keep in mind, Tom, Tom, that when you're over, over doing a Google Hangout, you cannot hear audio from the video. So all you're doing is showing us the video without any sound. Yeah, yeah, I've turned the sound off. And also to remind that playing other people's videos can actually get dads at a copyright strike, so... Um, yeah. Uh, no, this is not copyrighted. This is a, uh, uh, what do you call it? The common uh, creative commons. Yeah. Well, what he's saying is, uh, you know, the, the sunlight is a wave. It's a wave pattern. Uh, one wave is uh, is twelve hours. Yes. And the uh, the sun goes from east to west in a perfect uh, line. Only at the equinox. Uh, multi Tom Tom's video feed seems to be dropping out for some reason. Maybe I need to mute my microphone. No, uh, my uh, my bandwidth is not not that good. Uh, sorry about that. Um, right, but uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's uh, the, the sun, right? If you can imagine uh, the tropics. The equator and the tropics, obviously, on the on the equinox, the 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 sun travels 
along the equator from east to west yeah correct yes do you understand what do you understand what i'm trying to say yes the the sun goes over the earth right so uh, that's the reason like we can see the sun rising due east and setting due west that's right so just what we're talking about looking due east due west uh um, which contradicts the any lines that we see on any map including the Mercator map as we saw before so I'm, i can't see that you've actually explained how we could be seeing the sun due east due west on the equinox from any location Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a few videos lined up. Uh, my uh, bandwidth is not that good, so I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe, 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 maybe we can do a Skype, uh, like a private one-to-one, -one, and you can record it and uh, like publish it in, right. on, on your channel. Yeah. I think uh, probably at the moment. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that it's really bad, you know, my bandwidth at the moment is really terrible, so I can't play any videos for some reason. Okay. Um, I think probably both of us would like to be better organized with videos and resources and, and so on. So what we need to do is organize a, a mutually convenient time ahead of time so that everybody knows when it's going to be um, and so that we can both prepare and, and be ready for the Hangout. Um, I would just like to go back to, um, now I'll just stop my sharing so that I can start it again. Just to point out really uh, quick, I just checked the links on the video that he showed. It is not a Creative Commons license. Okay. I think for the purpose of this video, we're using it as fair use for the purposes of commentary, criticism, et cetera, et cetera. I've had several copyright strikes against my channel in the past. Not one of them has stuck because I've appealed them all. And if there is any question of a copyright strike, I will appeal them and... Uh, for the purposes of what we're doing, they will not, uh, they will not stick. Or if you want to delete this one, Daz, I mean, you know, we didn't get to a you know, really good start, you know, so like you said, uh, if you want to do another one, you know, where we're both much more prepared, you know, than, than we are today, uh, then I won't show you, I won't, I won't play any videos, but we can show images. You know, that, that won't cause any strikes, would it? No, images are fine. Yep. Okay, well, it, it sounds like we're probably not going to go too much further unless we want to discuss aspects of flat earth in general. But I just want to bring us back to the original point of this challenge, and these were the comments that you made six months ago, and I think that this is what people are, are probably screaming out in their chairs at the moment as, as, they're, um, as they're listening. And this was the, the original uh, challenge that you set out six months ago in the statements that you made. Now, clearly you have accepted that the sun does, in fact, rise due east and it does in fact set due west on the equinox okay am i correct on that point yeah you are yeah um and uh you know Daza, i'm willing to eat humble pie right i'm and when i get a job <laughs> and when i get some money i'll come down i'll come down to new zealand uh I, i'll come to tauranga uh, there's a guy I, do you know Boti Boat Face? I think he also lives in your uh, in your town there. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, he's a chef, so uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll go over, we'll go over to his place and uh, get something to eat and uh, get a drink as well. So hopefully, well, you know, when I get a job at, at the moment, I'm unemployed. <laughs> well, that would be fantastic. And uh, if if you ever do make it to Tauranga, New Zealand, I will take you down to the observatory and give you a tour. I will show you through the telescopes and uh, maybe. Uh, you, me, and Boaty McBoatface, and anybody else who might like to join us uh, could set up some experiments observing the sun, checking some angles, and uh, doing things such as checking the angular size of the sun from sunrise to midday to sunset so that we can see that the angular size of the, the, the sun does not change as the sun crosses the sky. Um, now, I should point out that a lot of people like posting videos showing the sun apparently shrinking as it heads towards the horizon, but what they don't seem to understand is that um, most of what we see when we look at the sun is actually glare and you, you must use a suitable solar filter to remove that glare so that you can actually see the the actual sun or the disk of the sun now when i say disk i'm not suggesting that the, that the sun is flat for one moment but obviously we see basically a two-dimensional image uh, it's pretty hard to see that the sun as a sphere unless you're looking through a proper solar telescope which we um 
which we do have down at the observatory. We've got a Lunt Solar 60 telescope, and you can actually see that the sun is a sphere when you're looking through that. So, um, yeah, I'd, as I say, I'd, I'd welcome you. Um, I acknowledge that you have uh, accepted that you were mistaken about that the sunrise is sunset, and good on you for acknowledging that. Yeah, you're, you're a good man, Daza. You know, I mean, you know, uh, I'm not really a nasty person, you know, so <laughs> contrary to a popular belief. Um, Another thing is the trouble with the flat Earth at the moment is the the AE Gleason's map just doesn't work. You know there is no there is no evidence of a of an ice ring, right? The sun and the moon doesn't work on uh, the AE or the Gleason's map. So when you do a video, obviously you, you know that's the uh, the best thing you have to uh, you know to use. You know so I can understand that, but. It's, it's about the time flat earthers come to the realization that those maps just does not work. You know, it's a lot of bollocks. It's just a, it's just a globe flattened down. You know, if you can imagine the North Pole, somebody just squished it down and flattened it out. You know, that's all. That's all it is. And yeah, many, yeah. you know, many, sorry, just to add yeah. as well, many flat earthers are now coming out and saying, you know, from now on, anybody who's promoting that is just a disin disinfo agent. You know, right and. That's a good point you make too. It's a, it's a type of uh, equidistant uh, projection map and you can also have the same type of map uh, where, where the, the South Pole is at the center of, of a map. Um, you can have those maps from any angle, um, but the one that we use of course um, uh, logically has the North Pole in the center of the map, which makes sense to me. Um, but I make the point too that also from the point of view of an amateur astronomer is that I don't see anything about the flat earth that works in practice. It doesn't work in theory, it doesn't work in practice. I have astronomy software that I can use to check events from uh, any date and time from any location. I can go forward in time, I can go back in time, I can choose any location on the earth and when I view the events they match perfectly with what we see uh, in practice. Um, for example I can check ahead for eclipses, solar lunar eclipses or transits of Mercury or Venus across the face of the Sun and I can expect that uh, on the date and time it says in the simulation that uh, if I point the telescope at the sky what I see in the simulation is what I will see in practice. The flat earth uh, model uh, doesn't work. They have no models for uh, predicting uh, things such as eclipses or transits or um, anything at all that I can think of. In fact the most most technical sort of um, simulator that, that, that I've, I've seen in many ways is the avatar that you're using um, for your YouTube channel with the, with the sun whizzing around. I've seen another one with the moon chasing it 180 degrees apart and of course that's not the case with, with the moon because the, the phases change. Multi Tom Tom. Yeah, so uh, you know, I think a lot of people wanted my blood, you know, on this thing. So, <laughs> so I got, I got my face. I got, uh, I've eaten humble pie. <laughs> what else? Uh, what else does people want? Now? Right. Well, and I appreciate that. I thank you. Um, I'm a reasonable sort of guy, and I, I hope that you see that, um, especially where somebody is prepared to meet me halfway. Okay. Um, there's some pretty uh, vigorous discussion that goes on and sometimes things get rather heated in the comments um, both on YouTube and Facebook but like I say I'm a very reasonable person I prefer to have an open and balanced discussion um, and that's why I encourage flat earthers to be involved to collaborate to come together with the globe earthers and um, you know let's work together let's do some practical experiments from all over the world and compare our data and see what conclusions we can come to um, if we're all looking for the truth then no one should uh, fear collaborating in that way. Absolutely, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, Dasa, you know, like we should uh, we should do another one. You know, when we when we are both more prepared, you know, like we do our research. Uh, you know, it's just a uh, short notice. You know, like um, I mean, I, to be honest, I didn't even think that uh, that you contact me today because like cause we're on opposite sides of the world. You know, and twelve hour difference. You know, in the uh, you know, you know what I mean. If I can, if I can offer something. Yeah, so, sure. Um, you don't actually have to wait for the equinox next year. You can actually do the same kind of testing at the winter solstice, since Daz is below the tropic of, tropic of Capricorn. The no, that's not it. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm satisfied. You know, I'm, I'm satisfied that the uh, that the sun rises due east and so 
on the equinox. So, oh, equinox, so. hear me out, Tom Tom. Hear me out. With data being south of the Tropic of Capricorn, um, with your flat square model, the sun should still be rising north or east of his location. But I'm pretty sure that everybody knows what's going to happen on this winter solstice. It's going to rise to the south. Right. Do you follow that uh, multi tom tom? Yeah, yeah, I do. Absolutely. Um, maybe you can make another video, does it? You know, just uh, you know, just uh, explaining what uh, Sean just said. You know, yeah. maybe people will look out for it. You know. Mm. Yeah, I'll um, I'll screen share again, and uh, I've got some images that will help for that. Okay. Now, can you see see these images? I'm sure. They're on screen. Um, now, solstice challenge. Okay. Now I'm not sure if is the image changing as I go. Yeah, it is. Okay. Next time I do this, I'll have another computer uh, open next to me so I can glance over and see what's on screen. What we're looking at here is the um, the uh, daylight map from timeanddate.com showing the position of the, the sun on December 21st. Okay, so you can see that the sun is directly above the North Island of New Zealand. Um, but if we look at the situation on suncalc.org, this shows the actual sunrise and sunset positions. And instead of looking north to the sun, I'm actually looking uh, southwards. So I'm looking um, southeast and southwest for sunrise and sunset. Um, so it doesn't matter which flat Earth map you use, uh, even if you use the uh, um, Mercator map. Um, we've got big problems because I shouldn't be looking to the, the southeast for sunrise. I shouldn't be looking to the southwest for sunrise, uh, for sunset rather. Uh, I should be looking to the northern part of my sky. Now certainly the sun does uh, cross over at, at, at midday or solar noon. The sun is in the uh, northern half of my sky, but then it arcs around and it sets in the southwest. So the flat earth model has a big problem there that needs explaining. So that is going to be the next uh, challenge is the solstice challenge. And I'd really like some flat earthers from the southern hemisphere below the Tropic of Capricorn to come forward. So we're talking about um, lower part of Australia and um, maybe South Africa, Argentina, um, because we need some observations from flat earthers who are below the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, that's a really, really good idea. You know, hopefully uh, I'll be there in New Zealand for that. <laughs> for Christmas, uh, I'll be there for Christmas. Hopefully. That would be great. Now, um, I've opened up the, the um, hangout video so that I can see the chat. So uh, I see Boaty McBoatface boat is in the chat there. Good to see you there. Um, Sean, have you noticed any comments in the in the chat that sort of um, need addressing? Um, pretty much the most active person is Leah Prada, which is actually Lord Stephen Price's sock account. Oh, okay. Um, and then They Lie Ohio has been kind of responsive to him. Other than that, it's been pretty quiet and calm, which is kind of surprising. Right. Yeah, I see Boaty McBoatface has uh, commented, for those interested, uh, go Google Mount Monganui, Tauranga, New Zealand, awesome part of our globe. So this is um, uh, where I live. I live in Tauranga, which is next to Mount Monganui. And the next cruise ship season is just about to get underway uh, for the next six months. And um, later today, I hope to be picking up a P900 camera, uh, which from the Flat Earth observer's point of view, seems to be the ultimate camera for for filming the horizon and so forth. Now we're also going to be having the largest cruise ship ever to visit the port come in this season several times, which will be the ovation of the seas. And uh, I'm looking forward to some fine weather so that I can film that sailing over the horizon. Um, and unlike my uh, first cruise ship video where I was unable to, con to keep filming it until it completely disappeared, uh, I was called away and had to stop filming. Um, I hope to film that until it completely disappears over the horizon. So we've got that to look forward to. And uh, again, I will use, uh, I think it was a uh, website such as shipfinder.com, something like that, uh, to plot the GPS location of the ship. 
that can be imported into uh, Google Earth and people can check the distances and so forth. So that will be another experiment to do. Maybe Boaty McBoatface might like to um, join me on, on some of these experiments with his P900 and we can see what we can come up with uh, compare notes. Right, uh, so shall we wrap it up? Uh, yes, and thank you, Multi Tom Tom. I really appreciate you uh, joining me on this, and thank you, Sean Hufford, for uh, helping me out with the technical side. This is all very new to me, and hopefully, the next uh, hangout I will be better prepared, and uh, um, it will be very entertaining for everyone. And thanks, thanks again, Multi Tom Tom, for um, uh, just acknowledging uh, the situation there. Uh, uh, good on you for doing that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, thanks, guys, and uh, hopefully see you soon <laughs> somewhere. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Multi Tom Tom. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, everyone, for joining the hangout in the chat there. All right. Thanks for having us, Heather. Okay. We're signing off now. Hello, YouTube. This is Dazza, the cameraman. Today is Monday. October 10th, 2016, New Zealand time. Um, and I'm pleased to have my very first live YouTube hangout. And we have as a guest, Multi Tom Tom. And I also have with me Sean Hufford, who is just helping me with the technical side of things, uh, as this is my first hangout. So welcome along, guys. Welcome, Multi Tom Tom. And thank you for joining, uh, joining us here. Hi, guys. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. So I'm in New Zealand. Um, now, if you don't want to say where you are, that's fine, but uh, maybe we can just sort of paint a bit of a picture if we can. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm in London. You're in London, okay. And Sean is in the US. Exactly where are you, Sean? I'm in northern Indiana. Right, okay. So um, we've got three people from all over the globe. <laughs> Um, and, of course, we've recently had the Equinox Challenge, uh, which was uh, sort of put together approximately six months ago after the previous uh, look at the Equinox back in March. And um, I'm going to just bring up uh, the video where this all sort of started. And uh, just bear with me. Um, as I say, this is my first Hangout, so I'm probably just going to take a little while to get used to the controls and so on. Um, yeah. The share screen tab is the second. There we go. Come on. Okay, so what we're looking at here is uh, one of my videos, which was about um, star rotation. I'll just um, highlight that so I can pick it up more easily. This is my video, Flat Earth Debunked Star Rotation, which I uploaded on March 24th, 2016. And uh, under this video, there was a lot of discussion as we scroll down and find that comment again. Here we go. Now, Multi Tom Tom, this was six months ago, as we can see here. And uh, you looked at the video and you said, there's nothing to refute because it's a load of bollocks. Equinox is just the time when we get near equal day and night, the time when the sun moves across the sky and reaches the equator. There's no evidence that the sun rises due east from anywhere on the Earth because it's a fucking lie invented by your heroes, the fucking ball Earth worshipping predecessors. They did that so that they could make the sun so big and make it 93 million miles away from the Earth, making the assumption that the sunrise can be seen anywhere on Earth. Fucking ludicrous, and all of you ball worshippers can keep worshipping your sun god. Okay, and then further down after I responded to you, you suggested here in this last paragraph, I suggest we set up an experiment where six ball earthers and six flat earthers do an experiment to check this at the next equinox. That is not difficult. If all 12 confirm that the sun rose due east, then I'll take the next flight out to New Zealand and hunt you down, and I will lick your boots and will become a ball earther for life. <laughs> right, so we set up the equinox challenge to the best of our ability. It was open to everyone. Um, unfortunately, there were no contributions by any flat earthers. Um, I recall that you also said that, that you would contribute to the Equinox Challenge with a video, and it's quite possible that maybe the weather didn't allow you. I'll let you explain 
this side of things there. Certainly I couldn't contribute a video because we've had terrible weather for months. So here we are, we've did this, the Equinox Challenge. We had nine videos published in total and all of the observations confirmed that the sun rose due east and set due west from any location on the date of the equinox. So now multi-Tom, I'll hand over to you and I'd like to hear your response to your challenge and the results. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Daza. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm very disappointed that, uh, you know, no flat earthers came, came forward with this experiment. Um, you know, I myself, I was, uh, I was in the process of doing it, but unfortunately, um, the, the weather wasn't that good. Um, but uh, I saw the video that you were posting, you know, there was um, like five or six uh, of your friends who posted the video. So I thought, you know, 